Welcome to Sound Approaches How To Series. I'm Trevor Williams, and today we'll be discussing RCA versus XLR technology for your cables. We're here with DJ Taylor, Sound Approaches in house audio guru and subject matter expert. DJ, thanks for sitting down to discuss some of these frequently asked questions about RCA and XLR cables. We've prepared a list of questions to cover and discuss for today, and these are some of the most frequently asked questions we receive from our clients. We'd love, you to, we'd love to pick your brain on this topic. So let's start with the first question. What are the major differences between RCA and XLR cables? Uh, Trevor, the biggest difference between the two cables is RCA cables are manufactured with a two-wire configuration. Okay. The XLR has three wires. Okay. So for RCA, you have your positive and your negative signal and a jacket around it. Okay. That's it. There is no shielding to protect it from RMF, radio frequency interferences. Okay. Now, manufacturers and their manufacturing techniques with that shield itself do try and create a barrier, but it's not always successful. From the radio frequencies. That is correct. Okay. XLR in its inception has three wires, your positive, your negative, and the shield. And that shield is connected at each end to mitigate any RF that okay. drifts So the shield the works like a ground. Shield is the ground protection from radio frequencies and other interferences. Got it. And that's the XLR cable. That's the XLR cable. And in case you want to know, it was developed in the 1940s by oh. Mr. Cannon. By Mr. Cannon. Mr. Cannon. Okay. Now, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cannon is who? Cannon Electronics. Cannon Electronics. Like Cannon Photography? There you go. Oh, okay. Well, that's very, <laughs> that's very interesting. <laughs> now, the reason it was created is because they were running long length wires for radio uh, remotes mm -hmm. and on studios. Okay. And, so for microphones and things like that. Yes. And they okay. got noise and interference. Okay. They also had problems with Bell Laboratories, the telephone people, because over long distances, they also had noise interferences on a two wire configuration. Okay. Now, did they use those in switchboard operations? Absolutely. They used them in everything until they used XLR. XLR became okay. the de facto corrector of this problem because on long distances with that third wire, they could shield out all this noise. Okay. So when the XLR was created, did the RCA already exist? Oh, yes. That it existed did. from the beginning. It was okay. always a two-wire configuration for everything from pretty much the 1900s into the 1950s. And then Bell or Cannon and Bell decided to create a solution to a problem that they were seeing of yes. interference, interfering with their long run cable. Yes. Perfect. And okay. XLR stands for external line return. Most people don't know what XLR stands for. I had no idea. Right. I had no idea. You'd think I'd know that, but I don't. <laughs> well, most people don't know that. So what benefits does an RCA have over an XLR cable? There is no benefit for XLR or RCA in short distances. Okay. So for long distances, six meters or more. Okay the noise that can get into an RCA cable over long distances does not happen. The interference is prevented in the short runs right. for both cables. For both cables. Okay. Does XLR cables, do, do XLR cables sound better than RCA cables? In a short run, no. In a run, long run, yeah, because you have that extra interference protection that keeps noise out that would interfere with your and that gives you a clearer signal at, at, and a clearer, cleaner sound. Long distance cables, yes. For long distance, correct. The short distance, let's say six meters and below, uh, I don't think any human could hear that difference. And those that can are the golden ears, and yeah. they're the ones that get paid the mega bucks to tell you what's good and what's bad. So the difference can be very subjective depending on who you are. And... Absolutely. But okay. if you put it on a scope, you can see those differences. Between RCA and XLR, you can... Absolutely, and even on short distances. Okay. But on long distance, and you can't hear it, but you can see it. Long distances, you not only can hear it, mm -hmm. but it shows up on a scope now, as well. how important is the material that each cable is made out of? 
Well, that's very critical and very proprietary to each manufacturer. So when you're looking at materials, um, the predominant material that is used is copper. Yeah. And when you're using copper, most manufacturers all use oxygen-free type of copper. Mm -hmm. But there is also an orientation of the grain of the copper crystal that is also very critical in the manufacturing of the stuff. Okay. So um, each manufacturer uses their own technique of manufacturing that gives them, per the manufacturer, their advantage of sonic performance in their cable. Gotcha. There is another benefit using an XLR. If you have young children in your home and they are run around like crazy and occasionally get next to your system and tug on the cable, an RCA will come out sometimes fairly easily. Yeah. The XLR has two clips, one at each end, that snaps into the equipment that will not allow it to pull out. Oh, okay. So, is that every XLR, or is that a specific all of type them. of all, all of, of them. them? Okay. Well, all the good ones. Yeah. Okay. So there is a given little benefit for um, long distances and cables connected, and you can yeah. imagine on a soundstage with a microphone cable plugged in here and 100 feet away, mm -hmm. plugged in somewhere else, and some artist walks across the stage and trips on the wire and unplugs the... Hmm. Absolutely, so, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So there is more than just the acoustic benefit right. to having XLR right. cables. Okay. So, but Are XLR cables typically more expensive than RCA? Well, or yes. can you find them in similar price points? Well, you can find them in similar price points, but if you take a cable from Tributaries, Wireworld, AudioQuest, somebody like that, and it's $100, and it's RCA, Mm -hmm. And the, you have an XLR that's also a hundred dollars. Uh, you've got more materials in the manufacturing of the XLR, so its sonic quality is probably a step below. Okay. So if you're going to buy an RCA, and you're going to buy an XLR, the XLR should be more expensive for a comparable performing okay. product. Now, in order to use XLR cables, your equipment has to be able to have the ports, the connectors or the connection terminations for the XLR system. Doesn't that mean that the electronics implement different, um, different pathways to, trans to translate the signal? Only the ground side of things. The RCA inside on the board for signal input and the XLR input is the same point on the board for a signal input or output except for the ground side. Except for the ground side. That is correct. Okay. So on the RCA, remember the ground and uh, and its shield, let's call it, mm -hmm. or the same wire. Yeah. So They're intertwined in the cable. That is correct. So they are attached to the same ground point yep. that the XLR is, except they don't have the same, same protection because of that extra wire. Okay. Okay. So XLR would be better a better option for higher quality electronics. Uh, no, and yes. Okay. Better from the standpoint if you were long distance from one piece of electronics to another piece of electronics, but no difference in short distances. No difference in short distances. But yeah. that's it. That's as far as audio quality is concerned. That is, that yeah. is it. Now, okay. uh, the industry is going to argue with you and I over that point because the manufacturers are going to say there is a difference in an XLR on a short distance versus a long distance. I'll defy you to hear that difference. See, and that's the thing. I mean, there are as many cables in the industry as there are fish in the sea. That is There's correct. There's so many different options. So how does someone know they're getting a good quality cable? Uh, sadly, um, you don't. You almost have to deal with the level of the quality of the manufacturer and the integrity of that manufacturer and the integrity of the designers they use to manufacture their cables. To know whether or not you're getting a good quality cable. Because a lot of times I know when you get a factory cable, the quality is usually garbage. Not garbage, but not high quality. Well, you're, not, you're not getting an acoustic benefit from the cables that are being provided. We kind of refer to that as the courtesy cable. Okay. And if you take a courtesy cable and cut it in half and look at the uh, leads of wire that are in there, they're not much larger than the, the, a hair out of your head. They yeah. are very small. So how do you expect that level of quality to be there? 
Yeah. And there typically is, even on an RCA cable, there's typically only two wires. There's not a third blended wire with that ground side yeah. or the negative side to help shield it all. Okay. So, so the courtesy cable, the conductors that are being run through it, whether it's RCA or XLR, either way, it's going to be of a lower quality or lower dimension and value that has... Always. Less, okay. Always. We, when we install things in our local clients' homes and we have a courtesy cable, take a pair of pliers and cut the cable in half and put it in the trash can so it can never be used because it's that bad of a sonic sounding product. Okay. Now. It gets you up and running, but it doesn't get you anywhere. That's correct. Now, okay. understand that just because a cable looks big, looks fat, looks like it had a big cord around it, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean it's a good cord. No. Because inside is where the performance of music matters matters and yeah. happens. One other thing you should think about when buying cables is where are they manufactured? Okay. We have cables manufactured offshore. We have manufacturing of cables in the USA. Mm -hmm. There are some manufacturers that use a technique that is not high in its attachment wire to conductor or connector. There are some manufacturers, wire world tributaries, that when they put their connectors on their wire, it's done US, silver soldered, very high quality, and QC 100%. That yeah. is not normal for our industry. Okay. Now, those cables aren't more expensive, they're just better built. Yeah. So this, I mean, so this this does go to to the XLR and X and RCA cables, though. the The quality is important. Of the the quality of the cable is important for the quality of the sound. If you want quality sound, you need to buy a quality cable. Okay. Well, I think that covers most of what we wanted to cover for RCA and XLR. What do you think? Did we miss anything? We can revisit later if you'd like, <laughs> but no, I think we did well. Well, thank you for joining us today in yeah. our discussion about RCA and XLR. And um, please feel free to visit our website at soundapproach.com. And if you like this material, leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you, DJ. Thank you.